I wanted to kind of, because I, I truly, in my opinion, I've heard of you, seen you from a distance in, in, the, in the way you got to where you are now. Um, and I think it's a true inspiration. It is a true inspiration, meaning you're a, f- a strong female in a sport that sometimes is male dominant in the coaching world. And things are not given to you in certain ways. You truly have to earn it. You truly have to earn it. Can you kind of dissect for us and the viewers how you get past that hurdle? How did you, because I know there are some interviews you go into and, you know, you're like, okay, they're, they're giving me some questions that I don't know if this is actually fair, this is this, but the way you present it, you bypass that. You still get to where you do. You still accomplish what you accomplish. Um, if you can get into that and the hurdles you had to deal with to kind of um, overcome it. Yeah, I think that just women in particular, and you know, it's not necessarily unique just to soccer. Um, I think the sports industry in general is obviously um, more geared towards like a male audience and it's more favorable for men kind of working their way through the ranks to get into coaching positions. Um, and there, there's adversity in a lot of different ways. And, it, you know, from a systemic standpoint, um, you know, I went and did my, my licensing in Wales and did the UEFA route. Um, and that was kind of a product because U.S. soccer had written some stipulations that required you to play three years professionally in order to get waived into the C license. And for me, I'd only played two years, but there wasn't a pro league for me to play in. And so kind of right off the bat, the rule had been written for men and it wasn't malicious. There wasn't something where they were trying to alienate an entire group. It was just that they hadn't even considered that women wanted to pursue coaching licenses. And so, um, you know, that, that in and of itself was kind of the precursor to me really pushing forward and, and highlighting some of the small nuances that women face. So then within some of those licensing, you know, courses is, um, this kind of idea, and it's not even in licensing courses, it's really just in coaching in general, is that women tend to feel like we're under a microscope um, where, you know, if we don't check every box in terms of, you know, if there's 10 different requirements, if women don't have all 10, you know, then we either don't apply or we don't feel like we're ready or experienced enough to be in that position. Whereas, you know, if men have five out of the 10, like they're like, I got this, you know, and I I don't know why, you know, where that confidence stems from, but it's something that I certainly feel like women need to give themselves more of an opportunity, um, you know, to prove themselves and to earn it, like you said. Um, And for me, just being in different environments where, um, I've been uncomfortable or I felt like, you know, I'm under a microscope or, you know, all eyes are on me instead of looking at it, you know, from like a standpoint of fear, I've really looked at it from a standpoint of, you know, if I do this, then this is going to open doors for other women. Um, you know, and we're, we're part of, you know, society where if we don't see something happening, then we don't believe it or we don't, we don't know that it's possible or that we're capable of it. And, that's kind of what I've tried to put on my shoulders a little bit because I do have the confidence now. I do have the experience and I didn't always, but I just put, I have that kind of mindset to push myself through different challenges um, and take them on. So in that way um, I'm, I'm doing my best to kind of provide a platform and really use, you know, my experience to hopefully help other women realize that like there there's things and there's opportunities out there that you might not feel like you're prepared for that you're ready for, but um, to, to go after anyway. And you never know what you're capable of until you put yourself in that situation. So, um, I've just, you know, really tried to challenge myself consistently and I, I, my, you know, my harshest critic. So, uh, whatever I feel like maybe men or other people think of me, I trust me, I'm way harder on myself. Um, and I always try to hold myself to a higher standard than anyone else expects of me. No, that's, that's powerful. That's powerful. And I think the visual I get from this especially you paving a way when you're when there's when you're looking at your journey your road and you're like I don't see anything at the end but I gotta push you know you're you're made you made a road for other female coaches who follow okay but and you've probably had your role models you've had your um people you've looked up to individual influential people but it's the women's game is still growing the men's game in the U.S. is still growing so a lot of the ones that maybe when you started out, there was no clear road still. And you're pushing through that. And you're like, is there clear? I got to persevere. But what's at the end? 
You know, when they look at you, they're like, I can be the next Tracy Ham at UC Davis. I can be this person. But you have to really push through that and put your foot in the door. And some people don't know how difficult that is when there is no light and you, you have to be your harshest critic in those sense. What would you say when you're going into these interview process? Let's just say even as a player, mm-hmm. as a player or coach, you're either coming for a trial to showcase yourself for a college coach or a professional coach or youth coach, or you're a coach going for an interview for a job. What is it that you're like, this is one key quality. I will never turn away on someone or it's what helped you get your opportunities. Mm-hmm. I think the probably the most important thing for me in the longevity of my career and even just starting is, um, you know, I, I think that I'm someone that has a lot of integrity. I, I do what I say I'm going to do and I have pretty profound follow through and, um, you know, to me, like my word is everything. And I, I think that I work, I work really, really hard at what I do. And that's, you know, that's kind of the misconception is there's a, there's a lot of times, you know, that opportunities and things come up, not just for me, but other people where, um, you know, the, the, the conception is that this is easy for her, or this is easy for him. And it's really not like, like you said, like it is, it's very challenging. Like I, you know, being vulnerable as a coach is probably one of the most difficult things because, you know, we're supposed to be very stoic and, you know, have kind of this, you know, kind of, not, I don't want to say like an ego mentality, but just, you know, like we're supposed to be a lot of things to a lot of different people and stoicism is really, really important. So it's hard to be vulnerable, but I mean, I'll be really honest. Like there's been a lot of tears. There's been a lot of, you know, there's been doubt. I've had those feelings where, you know, am I in over my head? Am I capable of doing this? And, you know, I think when some women or men even look at me, it's like, oh, well, this has been easy for her because she's super confident. And I am confident in a lot of ways, but I'm confident because I'm prepared and because I went through challenging things and I came out the other side on top. Um, You know, I really didn't give up. And I know going through some of the licensing process where there was a lot of people that did give up, you know, and, and not that I'm comparing myself to other people. Like I said, like I'm in a competition with myself all the time. Um, But in some ways it was, it was encouraging to see that other people had similar doubts and similar feelings. And it made me feel more confident, like, okay, I'm not the only one that feels like this. Um, And then acknowledging that, you know, really helped me kind of persevere through some of the most challenging times. Um, But I think, you know, part of what pushes me forward is like, I just, I love what I'm doing and I'm like, I love coaching and I, I want to be the best at what I do. And so just, you know, being around my players and being around other coaches that are super passionate and excited about what their role is definitely is a huge motivating factor. Um, and after I did the UEFA B course, I learned more than I've ever learned in my entire life from a professional standpoint. And it re like it ignited this passion and this like kind of fire inside of me to seek more information and just to continue to grow and develop regardless of how little I, I knew, you know, cause I, I, I want to say I've always had a chip on my shoulder, but like I definitely have a little swag and like a little confidence to who I am. And that's because I prepare and I do the little things right. And I don't cut corners. And so when I say that I have integrity, it's like, I actually do believe that. Like I, I like I said, I do what I say I'm going to do. Um, you know, but when you get into situations where, you know, your humility is in question and you're in environments where you're exposed, um, it's so valuable, right? Because if we knew everything all the time, like, I, you know, nobody would be in any situation. Like, there's no fun in that. Like, to have already arrived, how boring, right? You want to really focus on, like, the growth part of everything that you do instead of the outcome. And, you know, like you said, there hasn't been like a light at the end of the tunnel. There still isn't for me. I don't know what's next. I don't know where I'm going. I don't really know why I'm doing any of this other than I want to make sure women, you know, feel like they can take the same path to nowhere with me (laughs) potentially, but also, um, you know, just again, like highlight some of maybe the inequities that exist and also just challenge myself to continue to be the best um, version of myself every day. No, like it's, it's rare. Like it's, these are simple stuff that you're saying from your yourself as a player, Mm -hmm. as a coach, but these are the personalities that make great individuals great. And, um, I liked how you said vulnerable 
one of the things that when you said that, you know, the thing that popped in my mind because it, it was a fresh documentary was Michael Jordan's Last Dance. And there was, this, I don't know which episode it was, at the end of it, he broke down where he started talking about, this is the way I was built. If you don't like it, if you don't feel like you want to win, it's about the winning. I, I just want to win. I'm here. Well, all I'm doing is I come off this way, but I want to win. If you don't want, get out. Yeah. You, you know, and he got emotional because you can see that he wants, he's a nice guy. He He's a care, but as a competitor, we all know if you're a coach, if you're a player, when you're a competitor, there are times that there's wounds. And if you want to win, there's tough times that you just go inside, you lock yourself up and you're, you get vulnerable, but you have to walk with a facade. So I liked how you said that. And even dissecting one of the greatest athletes in Michael Jordan, he breaks down too. Everybody is that vulnerable. No one's built like a rock where you're like, <laughs> nothing, nothing goes through. So right. I, I truly like that um, hit a point too. 